Bucket Toast. Here at the Simcha Center headquarters to deliver a uh, Godel story, Al Habuke. Have our day start with a lot of joy. But today I want to tell you two stories about candy. Okay? And both of them about Mordechai Eliyahu, one of my favorite Rebbe's from this book, Avihem Rishel Yisrael. The story number one, because I think a lot about candy working at the Kotel, and sometimes I have some mixed feelings, not so healthy. But these stories hopefully will give us a, a broader view on the beauty of candy. There was a little girl, his name, her name, his name was Malka. And her father, of Ariel Fargun, who's a Rosh Hashiva, retells that she used to wake up early in the morning for the Nate's prayers, the Vatican prayers. It's today about six in the morning for Amidah. And she, like the other little girls, used to get up in Sephardi synagogues, they have a custom to sing, and all the little kids get up and sing this right uh, by, by Kriya Satora. And at a certain point, the little girl was old enough to realize that uh, she wasn't, she was the only little girl and there was a bunch of little boys there. And so she asked the Rav, Maybe it's not Tanua for me to be going and, uh, you know, singing with all the little boys. So the Rav said, indeed, if at this point um, she's already aware of the fact that, she, that she's with little boys, it probably isn't so Tanua. So the very next time the Rav saw all the little boys going up there, the little girl was staying with her father. And the Rav pulls over her father and says, right after the candies were thrown to these little kids, because after you sing the Yimloch, everyone throws the candies, of course, at the, at the children. So he goes over with a very serious face. The, rat, the, 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 the Gabbai of Aaron, of Ariel, comes over and says, yes. He says, did you make sure that your little girl also got a candy? And the guy gives a big smile, and Mordechai Leo gives her a candy. And in fact, they would make sure that all the girls who would wake up for Nate's, even the older girls, would also get a candy. So it's a great uh, story about the sensitivity of Ravel Liao and how he was thinking of everyone at every moment. Another story about candies and Ravel Liao. So in this week's Parsha, uh, it says, and I place before you the bracha and the kala. Hashem says, you're going to choose the blessing or choose the curse. So there was once a man and he would sit next to Reb Mordechai Eliyahu. And Reb Mordechai Eliyahu called him affectionately Harakadan, the dancer. Because he's a musician, and he was originally secular in France, and he became a Baal Tshuva. And now he would perform musical performances around Israel about, with Torah and mitzvahs and telling stories. And one day, this dancer came to Reb Eliyahu and said, Harav, I have no voice. I'm totally like... Sarud, please give me a bracha that I should be able to, a horse that I should be able to um, perform. And the Rav gave him a candy. He said, eat this. He said, okay. So he's on the way to the concert. He has the candy and still no voice. But the Rav gave him a bracha. So he's confident it's going to work out. He's going on stage and still no voice. It's never happened to him before. He, takes a big gulp and he thinks about the bracha of Mordechai Leal and he has the best performance. He sings like he's never sang before. The end of it, he's so happy. He wants to go tell everyone the miracle that he just witnessed from Mordechai Leal his blessing and his voice goes hoarse. And he doesn't understand, but he keeps singing and dancing and it's the best performance he's ever had. He goes back to the Rav and he tells the Rav the story and Leo laughs and says, I didn't know that you also told stories. You should have told me. I would have given you a bracha for that too. Gewalt. In fact, the story goes on. Later, Mordechai Leo came back. Uh, this, this dancer came back to the wife of Mordechai Leo, but Mordechai had already passed away. And he asked for a bracha again. And she said, go, go daven by the grave of Mordechai Leo. If you know where Mordechai Leo's grave is right by Rav Shlomo. And he did... And um, on the way there, 
uh, there was actually a Hachanasa Sefer Torah, and he danced at the Hachanasa Sefer Torah, and uh, he's driving on his way to the concert, and once again, his voice is still, again, he came back, because his voice is very sore, once again, and hoarse, he doesn't know what to do, and he says, ah, I wish I had the candies of Ramon Chaliel, and then he realizes, ah, there's still candy stuck in his uh, in his shirt from the Hachanasa Sefer Torah, so he once again eats the candy, and once again, almost out of nowhere, his voice comes back, and he has a fantastic, unbelievable concert, where his voice just feels like coming from another world. Amazing. So from this story, it's a little bit more of a Maisa, but it's a true story. You see the power of a bracha from a tzaddik and the power of belief in the words of a tzaddik, the tzaddik goizer and shem mekayem. And uh, if we purify our mouth and make our desire only to serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu, we too can uh, have the power to bless and the power of, uh, of our tefillahs being accepted by a Kaddish Baruch Hu. All right, I hope you enjoyed this week's candy edition of, uh, of Ramona Chaleo's Guzzle Stories. And again, this is not to say that I support eating added sugar and candy too much, but every once in a while, a little bit for a bracha, I guess it's okay. Have a great day.